Hi everyone. Well, last week we picked our grapes and we put them through the destemmer machine and also we started off the primary fermentation. So we're going to, in this video, see whether first of all that fermentation has finished and if it has, we're going to go on to the next stage, which is pressing the wine. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so the best way to find out whether fermentation has completed is to use a hydrometer. Now, what I've done is I've just measured out a, probably about uh, 80 or 90 millilitres of uh, what I suppose we can call wine now and put it into the flask here. And my hydrometer, which is uh, this thing um, in the juice at the moment, uh, you just put in there and you just read off where the meniscus uh, is on the scale. And looking at uh, this one, you probably won't be able to see it through the plastic here, but um, just have to take my word for it. It says it roughly is 0 0.998 or 996 there or thereabouts, which essentially means that all the sugar has uh, been fermented into alcohol. Um, so that's uh, a pretty good way of testing whether fermentation has been completed. The other way is, of course, to taste it to uh, see if there's any sugar. So what I'm going to do is put it in a wine glass and see uh, what it tastes like. I'm not expecting great things because we haven't gone through that secondary malolactic fermentation, but we can give it a go, can't we? Okay, cheers. Now, before I actually uh, do this, I'm going to spit it out. I'm not going to swallow this, but I'm expecting this wine to taste um, quite raw and sharp with, uh, you know, quite sort of hard, really. I might even think it's going to be a little bit on the, might even have a bit of fizz to it, to be honest. I'm not too sure. Uh, anyway, we'll give it a go. Um, I'm not expecting it to taste that good, but all I'm trying to see is whether it's got any sugar left in it. So let's, let's give this a go. Wish me luck. Well, yes, that's more or less exactly how I thought it was going to taste. It um, hasn't got any sugar in, which is a good sign. It is very, very raw. Uh, and by that, I mean it's got no sort of subtlety about it. It's got no nice round edges to it. Not that we'd really expect anything um, great at this stage. Uh, I can see why it has to go through a secondary fermentation to get rid of those sort of sharp edges and uh, get those sort of more creamy, lactic, milky acids in there. So let's keep forging ahead and uh, get on to the next stage, which will be pressing. If you've not seen one of these hydro presses in action, they're quite impressive bits of kit, very, very simple, but they've got a, um, a balloon in the middle of the uh, press here. I'll just spin you around. It's got a balloon in the middle of the press here. You put all the fruit around here and with this gauze, which acts as a filter, the balloon blows up and presses the fruit against the filter and it comes out um, through the sides here and gets collected uh, into whichever receptacle you have underneath. So that's what we're gonna do now. We've hooked it up underneath with the, uh, with the hoses. Um, oops, not that one, that one there. So that's just plugged into the mains water supply. We're going to put the fruit in, then the lid, clamp it shut and just see what happens. We'll just say at this stage, well, I've tried to keep everything as clean as possible. I've sterilized everything as best I can. And it's at this stage where we've got to start being a little bit more careful about how clean surfaces are. And the reason being is that the malolactic bacteria that we're going to be adding in a few days time is quite sensitive to sulfites. So we can't add any more at this stage. And so um, we don't want to introduce sort of bad bacteria that might produce uh, vinegars and things like that. So we're trying to keep everything now as clean as we possibly can do without resorting to adding more sulfites. We'll do that after malolactic uh, fermentation has been completed. But uh, let's give this a go to start with. I'm just going to be pouring uh, juice in, so it's just going to have some free runoff to start with. It's just going to go straight through the filter into the bucket uh, without the press doing anything at all. It's only when we start putting loads of skins in do we need the help of the press to uh, get the last bit of juice out. So uh, let's start and see how it goes. So as it starts to slow down, it means that we've got a load of the free runoff out of the juice. So I'm just going to spin the lid in, tighten the top down, so that's nice and secure. Okay, so that's fine. And then I'm just going to start turning the water on 
to blow that uh, balloon up inside the press there. So you can see we're getting absolutely loads more juice coming out now and we've nearly filled this barrel up to the top. So as soon as we're getting a little bit uh, closer to the top I'll put the lid on it. So that's the first barrel completed so I'll just put the lid on that just to keep it uh, a little bit more uh, clean. I've just turned the water pressure up a little bit more and again you can see even more coming out now. As that balloon gets bigger inside the press, it gives more pressure against the uh, grape skins and the, uh, the must that we put in there. And so that the pressure starts to build from zero when it started up to the mains water pressure, which in this case will be about three. And it will continue to uh, expand and push against the, the grapes until it reaches that uh, point. Once it reaches a, um, a set point, there is a, a pressure release valve um, at the back there where my finger is, if you can see that, and it just dumps a whole load of uh, excess pressure out of that if it gets too much. Whilst we're waiting for the press to finish doing its business, it's quite fun, isn't it, when you do things for the first time, and this is the first time I've done anything with red wine. It's uh, a little bit of excitement and intrigue, as well as a sort of bit of anticipation as to whether you're doing things right or wrong. And this is probably a really good point to uh, say that if you're noticing or have any tips that you want to impart, then put them in the comments below. And uh, I'll be really intrigued as to uh, you know, what you think and uh, how you do things, because it's all a learning curve, isn't it? Every day is a school day. There we go, we've reached a three and a half bar and the excess pressure is now coming out of the pressure release valve there. Now what we do is we empty all the water that's inside the balloon in the tank and we just release the pressure that way. It's going to be intriguing as to what we find after we take the uh, top off here just to see how much of those um, grape skins and pips we've got left. So I'm just going to undo the top here. Let's have a look. Okay, there we go. There's that massive great big balloon inside that's full of water and it's been pressing really hard against the sides. And in between here are those grape skins and pips and all the juice now has come out. And uh, when we eventually deflate this balloon, we should find that all this is relatively, relatively dry. A little pressure valve at the top there, which gets rid of the air as well. Okay, with the balloon now well and truly deflated, you can see on the walls here the remnants of the skins and the pips and things like that. And when I pick it, it is really quite dry. There's not much um, juice at all left in there. What I'm going to do is I'll take the metal casing away and uh, just gather it all up and we can have um, a look exactly uh, what it's like. Okay, so what we're left with really is a wall of relatively dry skins and pips and things. There's hardly any juice left in there and it just goes to show how good these aqua or hydro presses are. Um, yeah, I don't think you'd get uh, that much drier at all. So uh, yeah, you can squeeze it and there's no juice that comes out of it at all. It's really quite dry now. So, what to do with all, all of this? Some people make grappa out of it. I've never made it before. Um, what a lot of people do is they dry it, uh, put it onto compost heaps and things like that. Uh, that's probably what we're going to do, to be honest. But um, yeah, if you're interested in making grappa, which is like a, another fermentation that you can do off of this, then maybe that uh, will be subject to another video. But yeah, that's, uh, that's really quite good. Very dry.
Okay, at this point, I just want to say a huge thank you to my Patreons who really help this channel out for just a few dollars per episode or per month. Totally up to you. You get a lot more fact sheets and information and background videos and updates and things like that. So maybe I'll join you over there, but a huge thank you to my Patreons anyway. So what next with all the wine that we've just made? Well, I'm going to leave it for a couple of days just for it to settle, for all those dead yeast cells to settle to the bottom and also with the sediment. And hopefully then we'll just be left with clean, wine which will decant off or rack off into fresh containers and that's the stage where we're going to add the malolactic bacteria which will convert those harsher malic acids into the smoother lactic acids. So hopefully join me in the next episode where we'll be doing that together. I've really hoped you've enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a super week in the meantime but until then bye for now. Right I've got to clean all this up now haven't I? Oh boy. <laughs>